You can have a seat. We have sung a lot tonight about a babe born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. But what was so special about that baby? I mean, there are lots of babies born in Bethlehem. There are even lots of babies born in this region with the name Jesus, Joshua. We call him Jesus. So what was so special about this baby that here we are? 2,000 years later, worshiping and adoring him. Well, first, this baby was unique because he was the baby that had been promised in the Bible from the very beginning. Back in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, in Genesis 3, we have the first promise that the Messiah, the first promise that this baby would come. God is speaking here to Adam and Eve after their tragic fall into sin. And he says, there will come one from the seed of the woman who will crush the devil's head and set his people free. And the idea being was that the human race was begin, should begin to look for this one who would be born of a woman, who would be the savior of the world, the one who would restore the broken relationship between men and women and God. The only problem with this promise was the scope of it. I mean, there's going to be a lot of babies born to a lot of women. So how can we tell which one it is? Well, the prophets of God back in the Old Testament began to narrow it down for us. Next, we're told that this baby would come through the line of Abraham, the first Jew. So this baby would be, nationality-wise, what? Jewish. Jewish, yes. Well, next, we're told that it's narrowed down even further. We learn the baby would come through the line of Judah, one particular line of the Jewish nation, the kingly line of the Jews. But still, ah, that's a lot of babies. But it gets even nearer when we learn that this baby will come through the line of one person in the tribe of Judah, a very famous one, King David himself, the greatest king that Israel ever had. Now, now we're getting somewhere. But still, as you move away from David and the number of his descendants grow, there are still a lot of babies who are born out there that are Jewish from the tribe of Judah in the lineage of David. I mean, there's a lot of them. So God gives us another clue that narrows it down even further. This baby would be a Jew in the line of Judah, of the lineage of David, and then he'd be born in a very specific city, the city of David, which is Bethlehem. The Savior of the world would not be born in New York or Paris or Paia <laughs> or even in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem's a little backwater town outside of Jerusalem. If David hadn't been born there, no one would even know it existed. It was mostly inhabited by shepherds and their sheep. But it'd be pretty easy to keep your eyes open for a baby born in this city, Bethlehem. But then the prophets narrowed it down even further still. Isaiah tells us that a virgin, a virgin, will conceive and bring forth a child, and she will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. In other words, this was going to be a supernatural birth that would produce a supernatural child. He would be all man of the seed of woman, but he would also be all God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. So how many babies do you know that are Jewish, from the tribe of Judah, in the line of David, born of a virgin in the town of Bethlehem. One. I only know one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, this baby is special because he is the baby of promise. Now, by the way, if you're a numbers person, the chances of one baby fulfilling all those prophecies 
are 1 in 10 to the 26th power. That's 1 in 10 with 25 zeros after it. In other words, it's a mathematical impossibility. See, this didn't just happen by accident. This was the plan and purpose of God from the very beginning. A little side note here. It was because of these promises that are clearly laid out in the Old Testament that the wise men from the East know exactly where to go to search for this child. They came searching for the child of promise, and they found him exactly where the prophet said that he would be, in Bethlehem. Now, secondly, this child is special because of who he is. In Isaiah chapter 9, the prophet describes this child to us. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name, here's his name, he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, those are wonderful names, amazing names. He is wonderful. He is the Counselor, he is the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. Over in Isaiah 7, the prophet brings it all down to this. This baby who would be born, this son who would be given, will be called Emmanuel, God with us. This little baby would be God, made flesh. He would be God in human form. And see, this is... What blew the minds of the angels on the night that Jesus was born? The one who was their creator, their king, the second person of the Trinity had humbled himself and become a man, and not just a man, but a baby born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. And this is what caused them to proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. But the question we have to ask is, did the life of Jesus actually reflect this? Was there evidence that Jesus Christ was, in fact, God with us? I love the way Jesus described himself to the followers of John the Baptist when they came looking for a sign. Jesus said, you go tell John. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. You see, Jesus Christ did what no man has ever done. His miracles were amazing. His teaching about man and about God were pure revelation. He had absolute authority over the demonic realm. I mean, even the wind and the waves obeyed him. Jesus was all man, but he was also God dwelling among us. His actions and his deeds proved it. That, that makes this baby absolutely unique. One last thing that makes this baby unique, and that is what he came to do. I mean, why, why would God become flesh? Why would the second person of the Trinity leave heaven and come to this earth. One reason. We learn that reason from the last Old Testament prophet, John the Baptist himself, when he announced Jesus to the nation of Israel. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the what? Sin. The sins of the world. You see, Jesus had come not to be a political savior or an economic savior, but a spiritual savior. He'd come to save the people from their sins and restore them back into fellowship with God. Only one who was all man and all God could accomplish that. So how? How did he do that? Well, Jesus did it by going to Calvary's cross to die for the sins of the world. You see, this baby that was born in Bethlehem had come to die and die. He did not at the hands of the Jews or the Romans, but of his own free will for your sins and for my sins. Now, here's where it gets good. Death could not hold him down. Three days later, in the greatest demonstration of power that this world has ever seen, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus not only endured death for us, he conquered death for us. See, and that's why 
Millions of people around the world are doing exactly what we're doing here tonight. Worshiping and praising and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But folks, you see, it can't stop there. It's, it's not enough just to know the story of Jesus or even to celebrate his birth. You see, God wants it to go beyond that. That, that babe born in a manger 2,000 years ago wants to be born again in you tonight. And this is the centerpiece of the Christian life. It's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. You know, there's a very famous rabbi who came to Jesus by night. His name was Nicodemus. And Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you'll never see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus, he was a smart guy. He was a religious guy. But he was confused by this. He says, what do you mean, Jesus? Do I have to go back once again in my mother's womb? Is this some religious ritual I've missed? And Jesus went on to explain that the second birth is not something we do, but something that God does in us. It's a work of the Holy Spirit that brings Jesus alive in us. Now, how does this happen? Well, you have to receive Jesus into your life. You, you have to invite him in. The Bible tells us if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we will be saved. Jesus says, I, I stand at the door of your life, and I knock. And you know, some of you have sensed that even here tonight. You walked in this place, and the Holy Spirit began to move, and Jesus was, was knocking on the door of your heart tonight. And folks, I believe that there are many of you here tonight, and you know a spiritual work needs to happen in you. you you've been thinking about this. And I'm not talking about a religious work. I'm not, I'm not talking about a church work. I'm, I'm talking about a spiritual work. See, you, you need to have a personal relationship with the God who created you. And tonight is your night. See, Jesus is knocking on the door of your life right now, this Christmas Eve. And he wants to be born again and you, but you need to let him in. And I, I'm going to give you the chance to do that right here, right now, tonight. I mean, is there a better place? <laughs> Kapalua, Maui? Come on! 2018, 17, soon to be 18. Come on! This is the night. So let me tell you how this is going to work. I, I'm going to lead us all in a prayer of inviting Jesus to come into our lives. And in that prayer, you're going to confess to God that you've sinned, that you've fallen short of the person that God created you to be. And you're going to ask God to forgive you of your sins. And, and you're going to actually receive that forgiveness that Jesus purchased on the cross for you. And then we're going to pray that you'd open your heart and that you'd invite Jesus to come in and be born again in you tonight to cause you to come spiritually alive in him. And then we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us, that we might have the power to be the people that God has called us to be and designed us to be. And after that, I'm going to ask those of you who prayed that prayer to raise your hand. I'm going to acknowledge that by praying for you. And by that, you're going to be confessing to men that Jesus is alive in you and that you're going to follow him. And as you do that, we, we have some folks that have a, a great Bible that we're going to give you for free tonight. And we're going to come and lay this Bible on you. So if tonight is your night, if this is the night that you want to put a move on your spiritual life, and again, I know some of you, you've been thinking about this. You, you know there's something missing in your life. There's an emptiness there. Folks, this is what fills that void. You're going to be born again to a living hope right here tonight. So would you bow your heads? Would you pray with me tonight? Father, thank you for... Christmas Eve, 2017, Kapalua, Maui. And Lord, we thank you for the amazing account of the birth of your son. Jesus, we thank you that you left heaven. You came to this earth. You died on that cross, but you rose from the dead. And now you live. You live to bring salvation to us. And Lord, I know that there are some here tonight, and they've thought about this, and they know there's something missing in their life. 
And Lord, here it is, a personal relationship with you. Not a church relationship, not a religious relationship, but a personal relationship with you, having their sins forgiven and your righteousness placed in them. And tonight, while every head is bowed, I'm gonna lead you in this prayer. And if this is your night, you can pray this prayer out loud with me or you can pray it in the quietness of your heart, but pray it with me now. Lord Jesus, I confess to you that I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. And I receive that tonight. Jesus, I open my heart up to you. And I invite you to come in and live in me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my God. And be my friend. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might have power to live for you, to be all the person you designed me to be. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm your child <laughs> and that my sins are forgiven and that I'm going to heaven. <laughs> and tonight, if you prayed that prayer, and I, I want to pray for you. We want to put a Bible in your hand. But if you, did you pray that prayer tonight? Awesome, right there. You prayed that prayer tonight? That's so cool. If you prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you. So if you prayed that prayer, just lift your hand up and say, Ricky, I prayed that prayer tonight. I prayed that prayer with you. Did you pray it tonight? I always do. It's so cool. You prayed that prayer with me tonight. Make sure we see your hand. We want to put that Bible in your hand tonight. We prayed that. You prayed that prayer tonight. You raise your hand. Let me pray for you tonight. Anyone else? You prayed that prayer with me tonight. Any night? Right there in the front. Awesome. Anyone else? You prayed that prayer with me tonight. You see this? You're acknowledging before men. Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father and the angels in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father and the angels in heaven. Is this a good time where we say, okay, Lord, I'm following you. Did you do that tonight? Right there. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Born again. Wow. Anyone else? You prayed that prayer with me tonight. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Father, I know the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now over these that are now part of your family. Lord, they're born again. Now seal the work you've done by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, let them love you and love your word. Let them follow hard after you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Isn't that great? Wow, what a thing to do on Christmas Eve. Okay, now we've come to the most exciting part of our night. We are going to put fire in the hands of children. Oh, this is so good. So our ushers are going to come down. And here's how we're going to do this.